This is Colin Selig of Binghamton University. Today's lecture is on curvilinear motion, normal and tangential coordinates. This is from the book Dynamics by R.C. Hibbler, Chapter 12.7. Today's objectives, students will be able to determine the normal and tangential components of velocity and acceleration of a particle traveling along a curved path. Activities include applications, normal and tangential components of velocity and acceleration, some special cases, and some problem solving. Applications first. So cars traveling along a cloverleaf interchange, as you see here, experience an acceleration due to two things. The first one is the change in velocity. The other one is the change in direction of the velocity. If a car's speed is increasing at a known rate as it travels along the curve, how can we determine the magnitude and direction of its total acceleration? Why would you care? Well, if I'm designing a suspension system or tires for a car, I would certainly want to know what the accelerations are. Here's another application. A boy in a swing swings upward with some velocity v. We can analyze his motions using n and t coordinates. That's normal and tangential coordinates. As he goes up, the magnitude of his velocity is changing and the acceleration as well. How can we determine the velocity and acceleration at the bottom of the arc? Can we use a different coordinate system, such as xy coordinates, to describe his motion? That would probably be a difficult thing to do, since the boy is angle is changing with respect to x and y as a function of time. So normal and tangential coordinates lend themselves very well to problems like this. Here's another application. A roller coaster travels down a hill for which the path can be approximated by this function y. A roller coaster starts from rest and increases its speed at a constant rate. How can we determine its velocity and acceleration at the bottom? Why would we care? Well, if I'm designing this roller coaster, I would certainly want to know the accelerations involved so I could design the system so that the car doesn't leave the track. So what are normal and tangential components? So when a particle travels along a curved path, we define the normal and tangential directions thusly. So the tangential direction is always tangent to the path, tangent to the curve at that point, and the normal direction is just at 90 degrees to that. It's important to note that in normal and tangential coordinate systems, the coordinate frame, which you see here as uh, t and n, is fixed to the particle. The t-axis is tangent to the path of the instant considered, and the n-axis is perpendicular to the tangential axis and is directed towards the center of curvature. We define the positive n and t directions by these unit vectors, u t and u sub n. Now the instantaneous center of curvature, O prime, always lies on the concave side of the curve, and the radius of curvature, denoted by rho, is defined as the perpendicular distance from the curve to the center of curvature at that point. The position of the particle at any instant is defined by the distance s along the curve from some fixed reference point. It's important to remember this, the velocity vector is always tangent to the path of motion, as you see here. The magnitude is determined by taking the time derivative of the path function, s sub t. So velocity is v u sub t, where v is the time derivative of the path function, s sub t. Uh, v, unbolded v, is the magnitude of the velocity, which is also known as the speed. And u t, unit vector t, defines the direction of the velocity vector. Now let's look at acceleration. Acceleration is the time rate of change of velocity, which we see here. Now we know that the velocity is the speed in the tangential direction, so we want to take the derivative of this with respect to time, which comes out to be this. So here v dot is the change in the magnitude of the velocity, and u sub t dot represents the rate of change in the direction of u sub t. So as this particle moves from this point to this point, the u t vector changes direction. So after some mathematical manipulation, the acceleration vector can be described as this. So the tangential acceleration is just v dot, so it's the rate of change of the velocity, which is tangent to the curve, remember that. The normal acceleration is the velocity squared divided by rho. And we can also rewrite it thusly, a sub t in the ut direction and a sub n in the un direction. So there are two components to the acceleration vector in this coordinate system, as we see here. The tangential component is tangent to the curve, 
and in the direction of increasing or decreasing velocity. So a sub t is equal to v dot. We can also use this equation here. a sub t ds is equal to v dv. You should recognize that. Now the normal or centripetal component is always directed towards the center of curvature and it's defined by v squared over rho. Now the magnitude of the acceleration vector is just the square root of some of the squares. Here's some special cases. If the particle is moving along a straight line, that means that rho is infinity. So the normal component of the acceleration is v squared over rho, which is v squared over infinity, which is zero. And the tangential acceleration is still the rate of change of the velocity vector. Second case is when the particle moves along a curve at constant speed. So that means that the tangential component of the acceleration is zero. But the normal component is still v squared over rho. There's some more special cases. If the tangential component of the acceleration is a constant, we can write these equations here. These equations are related to the projectile equation because the acceleration is constant. Now, if the particle moves along a path expressed as some y as some function of x, the radius of curvature rho is defined by this equation here. So it's the first derivative squared plus 1 raised to 3 half power divided by the magnitude of the second derivative. Three-dimensional motion, if the particle moves along a space curve, the n and t axes are defined as before. And at any point, the t axis is tangent to the path, and the normal axis is directed towards the center of curvature and is perpendicular to u sub t. The plane containing the n and t axes is called the osculating plane. We can define a third axis here, which we define as b. That's the binomial axis. The binomial unit vector is perpendicular to the osculating plane, and so we can determine its uh, sense of direction by the cross product ut cross un. There is no motion, thus no velocity or acceleration in the binomial direction. So let's do some examples. Here we have a boat that's traveling around a circular path. Rho is 40 meters, and at a speed that is increasing with time, so the speed is given by 0 0.0625 t squared meters per second. We want to know the magnitude of the boat's velocity and the acceleration when t is 10 seconds. So what's our plan? Well, the boat starts at rest because when t is 0, t is 0. Uh, we should calculate the velocity at t is equal to 10 seconds using this equation for velocity. And then, knowing the velocity, we should be able to calculate the tangential and normal components of acceleration. And then, from that, we'll get the magnitude of the acceleration vector. So the velocity vector is uh, the speed in the tangential direction. And the magnitude v is given by this equation here. So at t is equal to 10 seconds, we substitute t, 10 in for t here, and we get 6.25 meters per second. Now the acceleration vector is the rate of change of v in the tangential direction plus v squared over rho. Now to get the tangential component, remember that the tangential component is the time rate of change of the velocity. Well, we know the velocity is a function of time, so all we have to do is take the derivative of this with respect to time, and we get this. So now we have an equation for the tangential acceleration as a function of time. So when t is equal to 10 seconds, substitute 10 in for here, and we get 1.25 meters per second squared. Now the normal component is the magnitude is v squared over rho. At t is equal to 10 seconds, the velocity we already calculated was 6.25. Substitute that in here, divide by rho, and we get the normal component of the acceleration. And the magnitude is just the square root of sum of the squares, so the answer is 1.59 meters per second squared. Here's another example. In this case, the velocity is a function of the distance s along the path, and rho is a constant 50 meters. Uh, we want to know the magnitude of the car's acceleration when s is equal to 10 meters. So what's our plan? Well, we'll calculate the velocity when s is equal to 10 meters using this equation here. And then we'll calculate the normal and tangential components of acceleration, and then the magnitude. So the velocity vector is just the speed in the tangential direction, where the magnitude is given by this equation, v is equal to 2 times s. So we're asked to solve this problem at s equal 10 meters, so the velocity, therefore, is 20 meters per second. Now the acceleration vector is v dot times 
the uh, unit vector in the tangential direction plus b squared over rho times the unit vector in the normal direction. Now we're going to have to use the chain rule again here because v is a function of s and I need dv dt, right? So to do that, I can say dv dt is equal to dv ds ds dt. And that's what you see here, dv ds ds dt. Now ds dt is the velocity. So this simplifies to v times dv ds, where v is a function of s. So making the substitution here, uh, v, v is 2s times dv ds, so we want the dv ds is equal to 2, right? Just integrate, differentiate this with respect to s. So the acceleration as a function of s is 4 times s. So when s is equal to 10 meters, 4 times 10 is 40 meters per second squared, so the tangential component is 40 meters per second squared. The normal component, the magnitude is v squared over rho, and we've already determined that when s is 10 meters, the velocity is 20 meters per second. So we square that and divide by a row, and we get 8 meters per second squared. We're asked for the magnitude, so we take the square root of the sum of the squares and get 40.8 meters per second squared. Here's another problem. The train engine at this point E has a speed of 20 meters per second, an acceleration of 14 meters per second squared acting in the direction shown, which is which is 75 degrees from the tangential axis. Find the rate of increase in the train speed and the radius of curvature rho of the path. So our plan is first we'll determine the normal and tangential components of the acceleration. We'll calculate v dot from the tangential component and we'll calculate rho from the normal component. So first we will calculate the tangential and normal components of the acceleration vector. So the acceleration is 14 meters per second squared and operates at an angle of 75 from the tangential axis. So tangential acceleration is 3.6 meters per second squared. Similarly, the normal component is 14 times the sine of 75, so that's 13.5 meters per second squared. Now the tangential component of acceleration is v dot, the rate of increase of the train speed. So v dot, the rate of change, is 3.62 meters per second squared. The normal component of acceleration is v squared over rho. So a sub m, which is 13.52, is equal to the velocity, which is given as 20 meters per second, squared over rho. Solve for rho, and it's 29.6 meters. This concludes 12.7, curvilinear motion, normal and tangential coordinates. Next is section 12.8, curvilinear motion, cylindrical coordinates.